Jason, thank you for joining us today. UXC offers many services to the nuclear energy and also the uranium sectors. Yeah. And the most important of which is price forecasting and analysis. And this is where I want to focus our discussion on today. And when you speak with the various constituents within the spot market, mm -hmm. what are you hearing in terms of liquidity? How many pounds would be available? Yeah, good question. I mean, it's definitely a, a, a much tighter market than I've seen in a long time. Uh, you know, let's say three, four years ago, it was flush with material and we've had what I call three big shocks of COVID, SPUT, and Russia. And combining the effects of all those, it's really taken a lot of material off the market very quickly. And it has uh, also increased the demand. Uh, so right now we're looking at a spot market where if you have one week of a million pounds traded, the price moves. You don't get a situation where somebody could just come to market and not affect price. If, you know, 100,000, 200,000 pounds might not move the market very much. But yeah, as I say, a million pounds or more a week, that, that starts to see the, uh, the price effects pretty quickly. So if somebody was trying to acquire a half a million or a million pounds, how high would they have to go? How high would the price go to get that in? Look, I mean, that's a, hard to say for sure. But, you know, just using the last couple of weeks as an example, we saw a couple of weeks of a million pounds or so traded, not all in one lot. You know, you have multiple trades, but prices have moved, you know, two, three dollars in that in that week, it's in a couple of weeks. So it definitely would move the market. I don't, you know, if somebody tried right now to get 500,000 pounds in a very short period of time. It's possible you could see the price move a couple of dollars at least. And when it comes to the sellers, I'm curious who they are. Are they producers? Are they traders? Who exactly are they? Yeah, I mean, look, it's a mixed bag of, of available pounds at any given time. So uh, I would say producers are much less part of the equation when it comes to spot supply. Uh, so you're talking mostly material that uh, a trader has um, not necessarily on the books, but, you know, maybe has figured out the way to access. And uh, so, you know, indirectly, maybe there are some producer pounds like offtake agreements and so on that are entering the market, but not directly by tra uh, producers, but rather traders selling those. Um, you know, you've got little pockets of other material inventories and the like. But uh, yeah, as I said, it's you, you, you're starting to get to a point where supply is, is, is hard to find. And so that's a good overview of what's happening in the spot market. What about the term market? What are you seeing or hearing there? Sure. I mean, the term market, it, it, it really picked up already last year, and it's been a continuation this year where we've had, um, you know, regular interest by utilities around the country, around the world. I mean, you've got, um, you know, buying by, uh, you know, there's been some well-publicized deals by China purchasing, but of course, um, you know, Ukraine kind of deal that Cameco announced, you know, pretty big contract with. Uh, so Europe is a big market still active. And then North America, certainly, you know, uh, can't discount at all what's going on there. I'd say last year was he heavier on the U.S. side than it has been so far this year. Uh, so more international outside of the U.S. Uh, in terms of uh, contracting this year. Um, but maybe that's also uh, a sign that there's uh, more to come on the U.S. market this year still. And right now in the term market, how many buyers are there? How big are the orders? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's regular uh, activity. Some of it isn't public. You know, you do have public, uh, we call RFPs, where a utility comes out and, and says anybody, you know, that can't, wants to, can respond. Um, you know, not all of these are for pure U308, but they can be, you know, bundled products like UF6 or EUP, enriched uranium. Uh, so, you know, at any given time, there's two or three maybe utility requests that we're aware of that are sort of more public. But then beneath the surface, you have uh, a lot more sort of bilateral discussions happening between producers, suppliers, and utilities that are ongoing. So, you know, they may be something that uh, happens quickly, you know, a utility goes directly to a producer and says, hey, what can you show me for 
the next five years or you know starting three years out for five years and, and they get something done pretty quickly but sometimes these take a while to sort of materialize and when you look at the spa market and the term market together what, what's your sense see in terms of the tones do you feel like there's a sense of panic going on with fuel buyers uh, not not really I'd say utilities are still they're they're definitely their anxiety levels have heightened not just because of I mean it's a combination of course as I said we've had some shocks some of those have affected their concerns over future supply. So security of supply now is paramount. You don't want to be signing up for product that you might not get. Uh, so there's definitely that risk profile has changed in their view. Uh, but price remains obviously of, of concern. They, 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 they don't want to be paying above market. Um, so, I mean, look, panic is not the way I'd put it. Uh, in the nuclear industry, you know, it's a conservative industry where folks run nuclear plants and the last thing you want is panic in a nuclear plant. Uh, same goes in the fuel side too. So, uh, but that being said, I mean, there's a lot more interest right now by utilities to lock things up further out in time than I've seen in, you know, uh, in, in, in many years. So from that standpoint, the buying, d the desire to buy and make sure I have product and fuel for my reactors down the road, that has increased substantially. And I'm wondering about the recent news with Niger and also with Cameco reducing production at MacArthur. Have these events uh, created any more interest within either the spot or the term market, or is it still too soon? Yeah, I mean, look, there's always um, some events that, that change the psychology first, and then you see action. So Niger, you know, we haven't seen actual disruptions of deliveries yet. That being said, the potential um, seems to continue to be there. Uh, that story has, is far from being um, over. Uh, the news out of uh, Cameco and, and, you know, over the weekend, that's so fresh that uh, so far we haven't seen a big impact. We did see a little bit of an uptick in the spot price um, early this week as a result probably of the heightened uh, concern over supply for this year. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it definitely has been affecting uh, the mentality in the market and we're seeing more buying maybe, as, as, uh, not more, a little bit of buying maybe because they ex there's expectation that these events and the, the production issues we're seeing are going to increase the, uh, you know, the lack of supply. But um, it's, it's so far I haven't seen the price move dramatically as, as a result of any of these announcements or events. So that's a good overview of the spot market and the term market. What about conversion and enrichment? You also offer forecasting services here. Tell us, why don't we start with conversion? Yeah, conversion is uh, perhaps the tightest market of all at this point. So, you know, uranium, Certainly, uh, we just talked about it's tight, but I would look at conversion as the tightest of all three of the, the front end component markets. Uh, you know, we had years of lack of uh, production or uh, per under production in conversion. You know, we just this year in July saw the big plant in the U.S. Uh, Metropolis plant restart. Uh, we're st still seeing the uh, the new plant in France has is still on its ramp up from, uh, you know, beginning of operations only just a few years ago. Cameco certainly is, is doing what they have to do, but uh, with the loss of supply out of Russia, which Russia doesn't necessarily sell conversion directly, they sell it as a, as a bundled product typically with enriched uranium. Uh, so that supply obviously has become much more risky and, and, and is going to be, it, it hasn't dropped off that much yet, but it will. Uh, but the big effect from Russia is that we've had a shift in uh, underfeeding by enrichers. And so when you take away that underfeeding, you do two things. You reduce the supply of UF6, but you also increase the demand for UF6. So it's a double whammy, basically. So from that standpoint, um, conversion has gotten really tight. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I didn't mention this, but across the board, all the component markets, uh, the contracts uh, that have what we call flexibilities in them, so the ability to go up or down 10, 15, 20 percent on the supply, utilities are calling in those flexes in really 
maxing those out, so upflexing, and that's increased demand, uh, you know, across the board, uranium conversion and enrichment. So all of that adding up to a conversion market where we're at plus forty, forty-one dollars now in the in the spot for KGU, which you got to realize we were at four dollars and fifty cents back in twenty seventeen. So that's the spawn market. What about the term market? Where's the trading? The term conversion market is right around thirty dollars, so not that far off the spot. Um, but the spot is really tight, whereas uh, term is based more on production uh, out in time. And yeah, thirty similarly is more than double where it was just a few years ago. And what about the enrichment market? Sure, What's yes. happening there? Uh, so enrichment, great story there. I mean, you've got obviously, as I just talked about, the impacts from taking enriched uranium swoo out of, uh, from Russia out of the market. Uh, and at the same time, the only thing that the, uh, the two other big enrichers, Urenko and Orono, can do in the short term is shift the way they operate their plants. So, um, uh, you know, increase their, their operating tails, which means they can supply a little bit more swoo. So the enrichment side, but again, has the effect of increasing demand for the feed, the UF6. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, price jumped dramatically uh, around April of last year, um, you know, from, uh, I can't remember exactly, we were on $50, $60, and now we're, you know, we've moved well north of 140 uh, at the moment, so uh, getting close to 150 uh, So, yeah, it's a very uh, tight market, spot and term. Um, you have uh, you know, some reactions so far from enrichers. You've seen Urenko announce they're going to add a little bit of uh, SWU at their U.S. plant uh, in New Mexico, but that's not going to come online until 25 at the earliest. So in the near term, um, you know, enrichers are only able to give so much uh, supply, and the prices are just uh, not, yeah. I mean, prices are now up to a level where they're incentive to produce more, but at the same time, um, you know, you, you could see some more room for upward moves on, on the swoop price too. Jonathan, in the past year, many market pundits have said that the spot price was not moving the way a lot of people thought it would with the positive narrative behind nuclear energy because utilities were focused on conversion and enrichment. Do you think that's still the case or are they starting to shift their interest more to acquiring uranium? Yeah, look, I mean, it is true that, especially after the invasion of Ukraine, the first order of concern was the enrichment because that's really what Russia supplied in the Western market the most. Uh, and so, yeah, it was natural that enrichment and follow on to that conversion because of the feed needs were of higher priority, let's put it that way. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I would say, you know, uranium has never been a zero interest kind of situation. As I mentioned last year, we already saw a big uptick in, in uranium contract. That being said, I do think this year has been the year more of uranium for utilities than I've seen in a long time. Um, and, you know, that that is leading to a lot more buying behavior by the utilities. But, you know, does that directly impact spot price all the time? Not necessarily, but, you know, so certainly we've seen an upward move this year in, in spot, right? We started the year um, sub 50 and now we're plus 60. And so, you know, not a bad move up if you consider, you know, where we were starting at. And I'd say there's still room, upward room, you know, uh, as a result of the activity that both utilities are doing. But again, it's not just utilities that buy uranium. So, you know, you do have producers, uh, traders, financials, you know, all of the above are active in that spot market especially. So it is clear that the demand for spot uranium um, and then as a follow-on for forward delivery, mid midterm, long-term, that, that is not letting up in any way from what, what I'm seeing. Jonathan, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Last year, there was 125 million pounds contracted. Where do you think we go this year in 2023? Well, I can tell you it'll be higher than last year, um, mainly because I already know that around 120, give or take, maybe even close to 125, have already been contracted so far through the end of August. So from that standpoint, knowing that the uh, fall season tends to be pretty active in terms of uh, term contracting, 
I'm not going to be able to say for sure how high it'll go, 150, give or take, maybe something in that range. Uh, 200 million? I don't think we get to 200 uh, this year, but, you know, never say never. Could, could happen still. Jonathan, you've been involved in this industry for many years. Have you ever seen another time when it's been this bullish for both nuclear energy and also the uranium? Yeah, so I was just quoted recently as saying, uh, you know, this is the best setup I've seen uh, for nuclear in, in my career. And I, I do think that uh, that still holds. Uh, so I, I was around in the last bull cycle with, the, you know, prices going pretty sky high in 2006 and seven. Uh, we're not even there yet, I think. So, um, yeah, uh, it's a very bullish outlook. Uh, obviously, nuclear power is, is the, the reason all of this exists. So we want to see a lot more positivity on new reactors, you know, extending life of reactors. The demand story is, is really good. That'll obviously lead to more positivity on, on the uranium side and, and likely upward moves in, in price. Jonathan, thank you very much for spending time with us today and providing your insights on the uranium pricing. Thank you. Enjoyed it.